Hi, I'm Allison the Crocheter. And I'm Vivian the Knitter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Hello, and welcome to episode 33 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. This is a knitting and crocheting podcast hosted by me and my mom, Vivian. I'm recording from my home here in Edinburgh. And I'm recording from my home here in New Hampshire. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our little crafting session, or talking about crafting session and chatting about our lives and everything. Yeah. I don't think we have any special thank yous today, do we? No, but if we have any new uh, listeners, thanks for stopping by. And, of course, thank you to the returning listeners for listening in. Yeah. So, how did you like the BuzzFeed quiz? Um, Good. So, I, I will say this is our second time trying to record. So, <laughs> this is a take a, the same theme of a BuzzFeed quiz that we tried yesterday, but slightly different. I like this one because, well, anyways, it's... Uh, everyone has a Sesame Street character that matches their personality. Here's yours. Which is a dumb way of just saying, what Sesame Street character are you? <laughs> are you most like? Because <laughs> the one that we tried yesterday, it was only out of three characters. Yeah. If you were Cookie Monster, Big Bird, or Elmo. Uh-huh. Um, and I feel like my result this time was a lot funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you get? Who'd you get? I got Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> <laughs> it says... <laughs> You're fearless and bold in your beliefs. You may be a bit of a cynic, but underneath that rough exterior is someone who loves people and companionship. No matter the situation, you always tackle it with humor, a bit of sarcasm, and a lot of love. Which I feel like, in some ways, like, you know, maybe without the very rough exterior. Like, some of it's, you know, relatively Uh, generally sort of accurate. Oh, that's funny. Well, I got, I got two people. Two? Two Oh, did you get Bert and Ernie? I got Bert and Ernie. (laughs) This says, you're someone who is always cheerful and energetic, never seeming to have a bad day. People love you for your cheerful disposition and your and you positively touch the lives of everyone you come across on a daily basis. You shine in a beautiful way and nobody, nobody can stop your glow. Nothing means more to you than friendship and that's something you hold near and dear to your heart. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, nice. Which is kind of funny because the reason why I picked a Sesame Street themed BuzzFeed is uh, because Sesame Street or I should say Bert and Ernie was in the news lately because the person well one of the writers that used to write for the Sesame Street workshop says that when he was writing for writing for Bert and Ernie he always regarded them as being gay Mm -hmm. uh, but because well, he's gay himself, so that's how he he imagined, imagined Bert and Ernie. And the Sesame Street Workshop sent out this press release that says, As we have always said, Bert and Ernie are best friends. They were created to teach preschoolers that people can be good friends with those who are very different from themselves. Even though they are identified as male characters and possess many human traits and characteristics, as most Sesame Street puppets do, they remain puppets. And do not have a sexual orientation. <laughs> mm. So I thought that, that was funny. Because puppies can't have sex. It's a bit It's a bit sad. I mean, <laughs> there was definitely that movie that came out recently, or is coming out, that was very raunchy with puppets. Uh, really? <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's a bit sad that Sesame Street has to, like, put out a statement like that in the first place. Yeah. Because people take it you know the way they take it yeah but doesn't i mean they're puppets doesn't really matter yeah but but i mean you know it doesn't and it it does i don't know (laughs) um i i want to know what what tasty snack you picked oh it it was the cupcake the chocolate cupcake of course oh i don't want to go for the well, when I was, because it's like popcorn, yogurt, parfait. Okay, cupcake is good. Apple, kale chips. Kale I was like, chips. these are not fun, tasty snacks. But there's the um, guac, guac and chips. Yeah, so by the end of it, I got to guac and chips. I'm like, ooh, guac and chips. That used to be my um, drunk snack at uh-huh. uh, Colgate because we always used to have a box of avocados constantly in the kitchen. So uh-huh. you just come home from a night out, and, and I was always the guac maker. So I'd, <laughs> I'd make some guac for, a, for us. <laughs> Uh, I've actually eaten so much guac in one sitting that I've given myself heartburn. Mm. Yeah, not very fun, but 
I usually, you know, if I can have anything I want and not wor- and not have to worry about the consequences, I would always go for the chocolate flavored <laughs> pastry of some sort or mm. bakery. See, so, yeah, I definitely so, am appreciating more like not. I've I've always been like I'll eat something I'm like oh that's too sweet mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> <laughs> um, where where would you go for your dream vacation? I picked Iceland. Iceland. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, I picked Sydney, Australia. Mm. I thought they had they had a nice mix of cities. Yep. Because um, they had like some Asia, Asia like Quebec, oh. Rio, Bangkok, yeah. Johannesburg. Yeah, they um, only had one in Asia, Bangkok. Mm, right? Yeah. But yeah. it's a big world. Yeah. Yeah. Only one in Africa. Only one in Australia. <laughs> uh, that's true. Cool. So, yeah, Oscar the Grouch. I feel like <laughs> I feel like it's funny because I don't know why I'm I'm associating this with Oscar the Grouch, but I think because I'm the American at work. Actually, I'm not the only American at work now, but you know, people associate this bluntness with me. Uh-huh. Like, I'm not terribly blunt either, but no. But I guess for the UK, you are. Is that yeah? Is that correct? M- maybe. Um, but for some reason, just you think about all the Sesame Street characters, they're all like super happy and like, whatever, <laughs> except for Oscar. For some reason that just made me think that like out of everybody in the office, I'm like, oh yeah, sure. I'll be Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> uh, uh, well, Staphylopicus is not always happy. He's, he's like the Eeyore of Sesame Street. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. That's enough Sesame Street. Uh-huh. What do you have for whips? So I don't have anything related to crochet because uh, I haven't started any new projects. But is it okay if I talk about a non-crochet crafty thing? Sure. It's it's this costume that I'm working on. <laughs> so because last week we talked about Crazy Rich Asians and I hadn't seen it. And I have now seen it. And I'm freaking obsessed. I'm going to see it again on Monday. Oh, really? Because um, I went with my friend on the Friday it came out here. Uh-huh. And so I'm going to go again with Sam on Monday. He's obviously not, like, as interested in it as I am, but I think because I've been talking about it so much, uh-huh. I kind of want to share it with him. Uh-huh. Um, but the reason I'm making a costume is because his sister is having an R-themed birthday party because her name is Rachel. And the main character in Crazy Rich Asians is also named Rachel, Rachel Chu. And obviously, I'm Allison Chu. So I thought it would be funny because I would go to Rachel's birthday dressed as Rachel Chu. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm basically I'm tr- I'm making a costume version of her dress that she wears to the wedding. Uh-huh. Um, not her wedding; she's a guest. Um, but it's this like blue chiffon, tw- thing. chiffon. Yeah. yeah, it's a Marquise dress, I think. So basically, I'm making like a a weird tulle apron. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have a bit like just like a, a long strip of gray fabric that. I'm just tying around my waist as a belt and then everything else is just sewn cool. from uh-huh. this belt. Um, so the skirt's going down in a dark blue and a light blue tool. And then the strap sort of crisscross from the chest around to the back and then attached like a to the halter, opposites. Almost like a halter? Uh, no, or, not like or, a halter. Like, oh, just crisscross to the back. It just crisscrosses, yeah. Okay. So I kind of have to like put my head through it and then okay. my arms through. Just like an apron. Get into the apron. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't go over my head. It, like, because it's... Yeah. Do you get what I mean by crisscrossed? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, that's that's what I'm working on right now. It, the, bir- the, the birthday party, Rachel's birthday party isn't for another week. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I'm just attaching the the flowers on now. Oh, that's cute. Um, but obviously, it's it's extremely see through because I bought like cheap tool that I could buy for. I think it was like 150 for a meter. Uh-huh. So I bought five meters, five or six meters altogether. Um, and I'm so I'm just wearing it over a blue dress that I already have. Uh huh. And then that's going on top. <laughs> I think that's pretty ingenious that you thought of something like that. Yeah, well, I I didn't want to dress up as, like, a rabbit or a reindeer. I wanted to do something. (laughs) I wanted to dress up as a person, I guess, was one thing. Uh Uh-huh. I feel like I maybe should have just done something more obvious, because no one's going to know what I'm dressed up as. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, Rachel knows what you're going to be dressed up as, so that's all that counts. And she's already approved, right? Yeah, she she totally got it. Like, I don't think she's seen the movie, so when I asked her... uh, 
have you seen Crazy Rich Asians? Because she was asking me what I was going to dress up as. She must have done a quick Google, and then she totally got it. She's like, oh my god, you're going to be like part me, part you. <laughs> Except not. <laughs> In name only. Uh, um, that's funny. Well, I can't yeah. wait to see it done. Mm. And I've also just bought like a cheap little silver headband from eBay because she had a little thing in her head. Oh, like her a hair. little, little uh, like a tiara? Was she wearing like a tiara or was it uh, a sort of? I think it, it, I think it was like a headbandy tiara thing. It had like little like flowers or uh-huh. stars or something like that. Yeah. Um. So I just got something silver with. I think it. I think it's. I don't know if it's just gems or flowers. I don't uh-huh. know. Silver. That would be sparkly. cute. Very cute. Well. Yeah. I have a couple of whips. I'm working. <laughs> so the Angie that I started a couple weeks ago or before our mm-hmm. last episode, uh, last time we spoke, I was up to the, cause you, you cast, you do a provisional cast on around the shoulders, right? And then you mm-hmm. knit up and just to clarify, this is a sweater. You're yes. Talking about. Uh, it's a sweater. And I got to the color work of the yoke. And then I was looking at the chart. I was so excited to start the chart that I didn't, I neglected to see that on the chart it says for sizes X, start here on the chart. So sizes Y, start here on the oh, different place on the chart. So to center right. the, 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 the pattern work on the chest. So I was thinking, I was like, crap. So how far did you get? Um, I was on the third color. So right. I was so bad. So I ended up frogging the whole entire thing. And then, and when I pulled pull it off of my needles, I was like, it's really loose anyway. It was just so, um, I ended up casting it on again on a smaller needle. And so you have to do a bunch of, you start with the main color and you have to do a, a bunch of decrease, decrease rows before you start the color work. And I was uh-huh. just sitting around watching TV with Madeline for a few TV watching sessions, and I, <laughs> I realized I had to did twice as many <laughs> <laughs> decrease rows than I was supposed to. This is on your second run. <laughs> this is on my second run. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> so I had to rip all the way back, and so you're just not paying attention then. Just not paying attention because I was watching. Or no fault of the pattern. Apparently. No, no, no. It's not. <laughs> It's not the pattern as well. It's pattern is actually very well written. It's, it's just the fact that I'm not paying attention. We're, we're, we finished watching the rest of Kim's Convenience. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, crap. So I had to rip it all out. And then and then I just set it aside. It's like, yeah, I can't. I don't even want to deal with you anymore. <laughs> so yeah. I put it in timeout and started something else, finished that, and, and then I brought it back out again. So I am pretty much done with the color work part. Oh, nice. So it's now just the main color for the rest of the chest or the rest of the front, whatever, the top, the yoke Uh to the neck. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. And I can't wait to to finish that part and start, you know, the the slit for the arms. Mm. But then, but is is the color work not the more interesting part to actually work on? Yeah, it is. I do like doing the color work. But there's also a little bit of color work on the sleeves. And on the hem of the of the sweater, I think, uh-huh. and you can you can either do it or not. And I think uh-huh. I might just do it on the sleeves. So, um, but it's it's turning. It looks really good. I'm happy with it. The yarn is great. It's very very smooth and soft. I can't wait. What to yarn are you using again? I'm using it's a DK weight, DK weight or sport weight. I've already forgotten. It's, uh, the main yarn is Martin's Lab mm-hmm. in their... In the uh, pink color. In the Yeah, the hot pink color. Uh, it's not hot pink, is it? Um, well, yeah. Well, I guess it's not hot pink. But, but it's, it's, it's a pretty bright it's pink. It's pretty yeah. bright pink. Yeah, it's a sport weight. Sorry. And the purple is, is a yarn called Ba Aspen. Mm-hmm. And I've got a Swan's Island for the natural white color. And Quince and Co. Chickadee is no that that's the natural. Sorry, and then I don't know. Anyway, so the, the Swan's Island is blue. Quince and Co. is the natural color, and pink and purple. So it's it's coming out really nice. Mm. You've got a mix of, or most of it's just merino wool. 
Yeah, most of it is. Because the... But they're all the same weight. Yeah, the Ba Aspen is... Has a little bit of silk in it. Silk. And cashmere. Mm, does it have cashmere in it? That's what Ravelry says. Ten uh, percent oh, yeah. goat. <laughs> yeah. Ten percent goat cashmere. Cashmere goat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it's I didn't know there was ca- cashmere in it. <laughs> oh. But that's that's just the purple was the main color work color, yeah. Yeah, like the the, the, the band that's um Yeah. The so it's band. B- mostly a pink and purple sweater. Mm-hmm. But it's mostly pink. Yeah. So there's that. Nice. That. So you persevered. I did. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I've already ripped this thing out two times. So this is my third attempt. Hopefully all of, all will go well. Uh, my second much smaller whip. Actually, I started this last after we tried to record. Mm-hmm. It's called the Shorney's Hat. Right. By Ann Kingston. Mm-hmm. And it's a color work uh, hat that has little um, sheep on the hat, and it's like a little plaid oh, nice. thing going on. And I'm using, I'm using the the yarn that I got from Edinburgh. I gotta find it. Uh, oh, from the last day. Yeah, when it was, when like, it was all the oh, the like. What would they call it? The shepherd. What, what, the shepherd. Yeah, the shepherds. Like Something. it was farm, farm to yarn. Yeah. Basically, like so, the dark, the darker one is daughter of a shepherd. Broom is DK, and it's the darker color, and it smells mm-hmm. so sheepy. <laughs> it smells so good, and Madeline was like, mm, it "Smells like a farm." <laughs> <laughs> the light color one isn't quite as sheepy smelling. Is lifelong yarns yarrow. And there, and this one is fifty percent blue face and fifty percent something else. Scottish, Scottish black face. I never used that before. So these were both mm-hmm. local yarns from Scotland. Yeah, uh, I think. Right? Well, you bought them in Scotland. I think Daughter of a Shepherd's from England. I'm just uh, looking at the actual yarn information. The yarn information. It says the source of the fiber is Yorkshire and Exmoor. Oh. And it's fifty percent Hebridean, twenty five percent Zorbles, and twenty five yeah. percent. But yeah, but they're both from the UK, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, there is. Nice. The, I think it's gonna look nice when it's done. Oh, I kind of regret not buying yarn that day. I sort of just thought like, oh, I can buy it like not whenever, because it's not like I can just get this yarn from wherever. But I can buy it online, and I've at least felt it. So at least easier than I can get it. So yeah, yeah this this will be my third EYF make. Yep. I made the light blue hat for you. Nice. Uh Which I still haven't seen. Yes, I didn't bring it with me. And my Martin's Lab sweater, the Engie. And -hmm. then this one. So I like how you're doing the the hat with the sheep on it for this particular yarn that's super sheepy. (laughs) Yes, and with super sheepy yarn. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the theme that I was going for. Yeah. I feel like... Yes? Uh... Oh no! I was just gonna say. I feel like when you think about sheep hat, I think about the um, the baobble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I've done That's already too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had this in my queue for a long time, hmm. and I finally bought it the other day. Like, what was the weight of the yarn? The DK DK, DK weight. Hmm. Yeah, but nice. but they're um, are they hand spun? Don't know. There's a bit of oh. thick and thin. I, I will, I've only started used the natural one, which is the lifelong uh-huh. yarns. And there's a little uh-huh. bit of thick and thin going on in, in different Says parts. Says it's mill spun. Mm. I don't know. The lifelong yarn one. Oh, no. Also, your bobble that you did, you did it in like the green and the blue. blue. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then this one. It's all going to be a lot more subtle. Yeah. Yeah. It's all. I mean, it's, this is this. What I love about this, the. The daughter one is that daughter it's, shepherd. yeah, the brown is dark. The, it's, it's, it's from the sheep. This is what color the sheep was that they, yeah, they sheared from. So that's cool. Yeah. So I think they use more than one sheep because, I mean, because it's a little, there's a little bit of light and dark in mm. it. So it probably didn't come from only literally yeah. one sheep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, I'm, I'm only on the brim because I just started it last night. 
in, but it's it's looking nice. That's what I was testing on my forehead when you were getting ready. <laughs> yeah, feel, <laughs> feeling how it felt. Feeling how it felt on my head. And it feels good. Nice. Okay, what about, what's next? FOs? Oh, FOs. Yeah. What do you have? So, funnily enough, prior, well, if we had recorded yesterday, this would have been a whip. But because we're recording it today, I finished it today, so it's an FO. I finished my Off Your Rocker shawl big blanket scarf thingy. Um, and so that was the one patterned by Rosina from Zines and Roger. And it's meant to be a triangle shawl, and I've done it as just a, a regular, like, scarf. And it's very big. It's very wide. And it's done. Uh, so I did it in, like, the bright coral color, four balls of that, and then two balls of this teal. Um, Looks nice. I like it. It's very... The co- the color blocking is very severe. Um, mm-hmm. I was kind of hoping that the teal would be a lighter teal. That My coworker was actually wearing a sort of teal jumper today, sweater, mm-hmm. and that, that was the color I wanted it to be. More... more mm. Almost mint, but not mint. Like, just a mm-hmm. more aqua teal than mm-hmm. this darker, I don't know, but. Yeah, so it's all right. But I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely do. more of, like, a stole shape than. Yeah. Than... But I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't need, I, I just, I'm not, like, the happiest with the color combo, so I don't know if I want to keep it. Well, it's up to you. You can gift it. You mm-hmm. can. It looks good on you. Everything looks good on me. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I really, I actually, I really like the yarn, which was the Drops Flora, I think. The alpaca wool mix. Nice and soft. So yeah. Nice. And I probably should thank Rosina once again for gifting us that pattern. Well, me. Us, me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the only FO I have. I have a very small FO, which I left downstairs as well. <laughs> uh-huh. But it is, it's a blue and green striped hat. And when I was mad at my Engie, I just needed something <laughs> a little mindless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's just um, some Knit Picks yarn that I had lying around, uh, sport weight. When at my last um, knitting group last week, right after we recorded, we recorded on one day and the next day was knitting. That was when I discovered <laughs> the mistake. Oh, uh, yeah. And I was like, crap. But um, the other ladies were learning to do a uh, tubular cast on. And they hadn't done it before. Since I've done it, I had done it many times where I was just watching them. But it's it's the it's the cast on where you like if you have a hundred stitches that you need to um have as a brim of a hat mm-hmm. you cast on waist yarn half the amount of stitches so you would cast on fifty stitches right and then you, and then you just knit a few rows and then you take your working yarn and you knit that in a few more rows. And then you, like after you have, I don't know, maybe five rows, you knit the, whatever's in for the knits, and then you purl one of the live stitches that's hanging on the, the waist yarn. Mm-hmm. You bring it up. So that's, so it, it's, it's a tube. You fold, you did, you literally take the stitches from the cast on. Right. And you bring it up. And you're knitting, you're purling those. I okay. I I think okay. I understand that. And but how does that? How do you get to the right stitch count? Because you're knitting what you have on your already. needles already, and then, and then you're purling. You're adding the stitches down here. Oh, that's um, weird. Yeah, I'm so, trying to wrap my. I like. I, I I understand that. For the same time, I'm like, how is that going to be big enough still? It, it stretches, and yeah. because you don't have a traditional cast on, it's there. You don't have that tightness. It's, it's oh, very stretchy. Okay. Huh. So it's also it's also a beautiful cast on because it looks just like somebody knitted something and then just folded it over, and it just right. that's what the bottom looks like. Uh huh. So it's neat. It's very neat, and it's it's really good for um, hats, sleeves, collar. Uh, not collar. Yeah. Um, neck. So did you know how to do that before? 
Yeah, I did. I, I learned um, when I was still pretty pretty much a beginner on one of those nitty uh, patterns, a free a free pattern mm -hmm. that called for it. And so that's that was the first time I did it. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've used it in patterns where it didn't specifically ask for that. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so anyway, because the ladies were doing that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a hat. So I just dug around in my stash of random yarn and found these, the blue and the green that look, look kind of good together. And I made a striped hat. Uh, I don't know who it's going to be, but I had fun doing it. So that's all that counts. So that's my only FO. Nice. Yep. Um, I do have some stuff for Yarny Bits and Bobs. Will this be Yarny Bits and Bob or is it Mailbag? Nah, I don't know. I've partially given up on Mailbag, but it was somebody <laughs> who had um, uh, posted on our Ravelry group. And I'll uh, still need to respond to the actual post. Um, but it was Textile Grad. And basically, she's going to be in Edinburgh in a week from now because she's going to Shetland Wool Week, which oh, is nice. exciting. Um, and I'm jealous. Nice. Yeah. Um, I actually think Shetland Wool Week, Shetland Wool Week is actually more than a week, I think. Oh. Well, you but, better respond to her on the thread before. Yeah, yeah. Before, yeah. Before, basically, yeah. <laughs> but she was asking what yarn sites slash shops I would recommend. And so basically, I think I would recommend Ginger Twist Studio, which is not a shop that I go to very often um, because I'm still poor and I buy cheap yarn. Um, <laughs> but she, her shop is actually not super far from where I live. And it's this cute, tiny little shop. It's like a mint, minty blue um, storefront. But it, it is like a really small shop. But in particular, the owner, she dyes her own yarn. Mm. So half of the shop is all stuff that she's dyed herself that she sells and it's all basic solid solid color colors like um for the most part but they're i've squeezed a lot of them and they all feel really nice uh, but she also sells other brands of yarn a lot of uk british yarn mm -hmm. so she's she's a cool one to visit and then I don't. I actually don't know what Shetland Wool Week is like in terms of. I know they have lots of classes, and because it it obviously spans quite a long time, but I don't know that they would have. You know, it wouldn't be you know a yarn festival, and that there's mm -hmm. mostly shopping and vendors and stuff. But Be Inspired Fibers is another yarn shop that's got a lot of indie yarn from the UK and all over Europe, and I think they have some American yarns as well. But like they have Cosmic Strings which are based out of Edinburgh. I remember seeing them at the yeah, EYF. They have uh, Ching Fiber, which is based out of the UK. Olan, which is in Ireland. And Skin Queen, who I bought some from EYF as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's another good one for, like, souvenir yarn, I suppose. Oh, and you know what? I just, I didn't even uh, knit the hat of the year this year. Oh, for the Shetland Wool Week? The Shetland, because, uh, well, it's only got been the last two years. Yeah, yeah. You picked up the pattern when we were at EYF, didn't you? I did, and I forgot about it. Ugh. You've got time? I do. Not, not, not enough Not time, really. Maybe. Not really. Mm. Not if I'm working on this. That's okay. I mean, you know, I have the pattern. I can always work on it whenever. But I completely forgot about it. I don't know where I stuck the pattern. Though it is a free pattern. You just have uh, to sign up for the newsletter, and then you get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was Luann, I think, had asked that. So... From Franklin, Tennessee. Mm hmm And I should just respond to the post, though, because this episode probably won't come out in time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for that advice to be useful. <laughs> um, the, 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 I was going to say, the one yarn shop that I actually go to the most is the one that I can't pronounce. Mc, uh -huh. McAery. McAery. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell it? M-C-A-R-E-E. -E. You back? Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, I don't actually know how to pronounce it, but that's that's the one I probably go to the most often. But it's because they've got, you know, they've got like Rowan Yarns, Hayfield, but they also have Erica Knight and Jameson and Smith. Although I suppose if, if Luann's going to Shetland Wool Week, she doesn't need to go to Edinburgh to pick up 
Jameson Smith. Yeah, because they probably had plenty of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I still have enough um, enough of my Jameson and Smith to probably make another Puri Floors, which is actually sitting right here. You have made so many Puri Floors. It's only been three. Okay, it feels or, like more. Or another color work with the same colors has that. Different <laughs> hat, same colors. Hmm. Is the new Shetland Woeby Cat color work? Yes, this is what it looks Maybe like. Maybe you could do that. You it's could like have blue like and, blue and green. You could have, um, you know, can you see? Uh huh. Coordinating Shetland woolly cats from different years. <laughs> that would be cute. That would be kind of cute. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'll have to dig out that pattern. I don't know what I did to all my patterns that I <laughs> that I bought slash received. No, I don't think I bought any patterns. All the patterns I got. During Edinburgh, what were the ones that were given free out ones. for free? Yeah. yeah. Uh. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful for Luann and for whoever else is going to Edinburgh. Yeah. I just sort of think I have I have this massive Google map of like all my favorite things in uh -huh. Edinburgh. I thought maybe I could just make that public as well. Oh yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> just for anyone who's coming to Edinburgh. <laughs> um, so we didn't have time yeah. to go to a yarn store when I was there with my sister. Yep, uh, yep, like, like you needed to do that, though. <laughs> you were just here for EYF, and you want to come again this coming uh -huh. year, so. <laughs> yeah, my friend's like, you didn't buy any yarn? I'm like, well, no. <laughs> well, I wasn't with yarny people, so I couldn't, you know. It, it would, it would have been. I mean, you, I mean, like, it would have been different if none of us were based out of Edinburgh, and, like, you know. You, you were just coming to Scotland this once. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm sure people would be like, oh, that's fine. We can go to a yarn shop. But <laughs> it's like you were just there a few though, months like, ago yeah. buying, buying yarn that, like there's just... no tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. And then and then exactly. plus the yarn that I bought when um, Hub Mills was closing. Oh, my gosh. I have so much yarn right now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I do have a favorite thing for this. You week, do? Though, which I haven't. Yeah. Um. So it, it, I got it off of Claire, uh, New Hampshire, who, who? Bully Thistle, Claire. Oh, she's changed her podcast to the Bully Thistle, yes. hasn't she? And she's also her, changed name her name, name too. She Has she? Well, did, did, she, did she explain she it going to by... me? Well, her, her real name is Corinne, and Claire yeah. is her middle name. So, yeah, well, it's not that her real name is Her Corinne. first, name, first is name is Corinne. Corinne. So is she going by Corinne now instead of Claire? I think, so. yeah, yeah. Is that what you're saying? Ah, all right. Well, <laughs> Corinne Claire, shall we say? Anyways, she posted about it on her Instagram. It's an Instagram account called Sheep of the Gram. Or Sheeps of the Gram. Uh, Sheep of uh, the Gram. Not yeah. Sorry, not plural. And it's just you know obviously an Instagram account that reposts people's photos of sheep. <laughs> and it's so <laughs> cute. And not only are all the sheep really cute, but the, you know the actual photography is uh -huh. they pick they pick some they pick some good ones but they're just so... <laughs> no you can't bring one home i mean and all different types of sheep not that like, they don't tell you what kind of shape it well, is because usually but... it's somebody oh they've stopped at a farm and takes pictures yeah, yeah. they don't necessarily yeah. know I want to know, what is it, yeah. was it Italian? Those sheep that look like dolls, their face is black and you can't even see their face, and they're all shaggy. Do you know uh -huh. what I'm talking about? I feel like those sheep. Maybe, because I'm, because I, I feel like there's, there's one, the second photo currently looks like that, sort of, uh, but I don't know if that's what you're Oh, yeah, about. this one. It's hashtag Iceland, so are they Icelandic sheep? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, they're very shaggy. Uh. But it their fa is it because their face is shaggy too? I think I can't so. tell. I'm not sure. But yeah, I love those guys. They're so cute. They look like dolls, like big giant dolls, sheep dolls. Well, when you say do yeah, it's like what, what does doll mean? Aren't aren't dolls inherently people? Well, okay, stuffed animal, stuffed animal sheep. Mm. You know, they they just look like toys. You well, have to. It it's been tagged in the Matterhorn, Matterhorn, Matter. On Matterhorn? At Matterhorn? Yeah, at the Matterhorn. At the Matterhorn. At the Matterhorn? But yeah, so if if you want a fun Instagram account to follow, I would suggest the Sheep of the Gram. Yeah, it's very <laughs> cute. I found another one of those sheep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so adorable. Yeah, she, sheep, alpacas, and cats. That's what usually shows up on my Instagram feed. Besides mm-hmm. the knitting. Um, so yeah, very cute. Yeah. Well, my favorite thing I've already talked about is the tubular cast on. So mm. we don't have to talk about that again. But I do, I. <laughs> but I, I do really like that particular technique, and it's nice. Um, every once in a while, your nitty friends will like remind you things that you haven't done in a while. <laughs> like, oh, that's right, I forgot mm. about that. I forgot how much I like it. So, is, if you like, like, would there be any? Like, could you just do that for like every project? Like, is there any reason? No, to it's not it's do it? um when you have a a ribbed edging. That's when you do it. Uh-huh. You don't. You wouldn't do it if it was just uh, stocking net, right? right? Right. Yeah. So I think the that was it. The Tardis hat that I made years ago. That one has has the tubular cast on. Mm. Yeah. I see. Yep. Do we have anything for Nerdtastic? I don't think so. But I I do have a little <laughs> bit of shop talk. Oh, nice. I feel like you haven't had proper shop talk. Yeah, about. I made. And for any 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 new listeners, um, our podcast is technically sponsored by my mom's ours, Etsy ours. shop, which is no, no, it's your <laughs> Etsy shop. Uh, I say that because I've done no work for it. It's it's just you, uh, Pearl and Plum, and she makes awesome project bags. Yeah, if we do say so ourselves, I have made a bunch of tartan bags from from Scottish Scottish tartan tartan yeah that that I acquired while I was visiting and I made some medium sized bags and a couple of sock sized bags and they're really nice because they're a hundred percent wool and they're sturdy they stand up nice and of course all the plaidiness of it is just adorable I love it and also, mm. there's. I also listed some fall, more fall theme bags. There's a pumpkin mm. one, and another one with colored leaves. I'll take pictures, so you can pop them up. Nice. Yeah, I think I think the best part of the the tartan ones is because I know that that fabric is off cuts from kilts and tartan trues. So some man out there. Is wearing kilt <laughs> from the same fabric <laughs> that your bags are yeah. made out of. <laughs> and I also made another London tea towel bag recently. Nice. So that one Very is nice. in the shop. Well, that one's not in the shop as, as I'm speaking, but as of this podcast goes out, it will be in the shop. So that's mm-hmm. all I have. Nice. But hopefully the tartan ones go over well. Yeah, there's been a lot of interest in the tartan ones. As soon as I posted them, mm-hmm. they're like a lot of people are looking at them. So I I will be making more. They don't all, they're not going to look exactly the same because of the nature of the tartan. Depends on where I cut the set. What's that? The set. It depends on where I'm cutting. S E double T oh. is like what the With the plaid. Yeah, the actual like the pattern. <laughs> the pattern. <laughs> like yeah, the pattern. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. um, so anyway, they don't. They won't all look exactly alike because I'm using more than one tartan per de- per bag, and it all depends on where they're being cut and stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so it'll be yeah flying off the shelves, cool. hopefully. <laughs> the, the virtual yes, shelves. Virtual. Well, they are actually on shelves in my room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and it's just me, so you know I don't make them very fast. So when you see that I'm out, just just you know, um, give me a ring or uh, a message and ask me if if you want another one. I can make them mm-hmm. with you in mind, and that's all I have. Nice. All right. Well, I don't think we have anything else, do we? No. Maybe next time no. I'll be done with my Shorney's hat. Yeah. And maybe a Shetland. Wolf hat. <laughs> <laughs> no, not if I want to work on my Engie. Uh, yeah, I mean, mm. it's it's behaving well now. It's not in timeout anymore. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll have to decide what new project I want to because I, I don't really right now, yeah. have a project. Yeah. Oh my god. No, I. You know what I have to do? I have to finish <laughs> the coin purse uh-huh. that I did. Oh, the- um, I, I bought a zipper uh, for it so I can just do the just just the zipper and the inside lining and. 
my puffin mm-hmm. cushion. I was going to crochet the back, I but I started it and I was just like, I can't do this because, That's because very obviously the, it's very dense, but also when I was starting out doing the same amount of stitches, it was just way oh. bigger. And I think it's because I'm just, I was just doing it one color rather than the mm-hmm. color work. And the color was making Yeah, that's... Tighter, I mean, that maybe. happens when you're knitting, too. When I'm knitting the, the, the sweater right now, the Engie, when I'm knitting on the color work, I go needle size down. And then when it's, I'm just knitting one color, mm. I go back up as needle size. Mm. So I think it just will be easier to sew a cushion cover. But I don't know how to do that. So... You can, re- you can bring it home <laughs> I don't when know you, when it's going to be finished. In th- over Thanksgiving. Yeah, I was kind of thinking... I'll bring it home in November, but then I was thinking, oh, that's ages away, but really it's end of September, it's not ages <laughs> just away, it's, two less, months it's away. less than two months yeah. at this point. We'll just have to find yeah. the time so, yeah, to I might do have that. To do that. Uh, yeah, because it'll be nice to see that on your couch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, then. Okay, uh, so you can find our show notes uh, at our website, which is just kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. You should definitely follow us on Instagram, we're kcacypodcast, or if you want, you can also follow our personal ones. I'm Allison here, and my mom is upstate underscore bib. And make sure to subscribe to us wherever it is that you're listening to us, whether it be on iTunes or whatever other podcast listening streaming app or YouTube and you can also join our our Ravelry group. Just search Keep Calm and Carry Yarn Podcast in the groups tabs um, and say hi. Hello. Well, no. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening. And remember to keep calm and carry yarn. <laughs>